the my gut response is the challenge that you're having is there's too many dots to connect. There's too many steps between them and the outcome that you've put in front of them. Okay. Right? Those are long-term situations. Doesn't make you wrong. Right. It's That's right. It's a hard sell. It's a hard sell. Like, one of the things that I'll say all the time is count the dots. Count the dots. How many dots exist between the thing that you want and the place that you are? You've got to get around people that are doing the shit you want to be doing on the level and volume of what you want to be doing. Go in and be the damn student. I could learn from every person in this room. Think about how you talk about your business. Yes, passion sells. But you can't carry on a real conversation outside the passion. You're going to lose. So the whole point of all of this is one, show up as you fucking loud. Two, get yourself in freaking rooms that scare the shit out of you. It's really about looking at those things that you know will move the business forward and doing them anyways. Thank you for allowing me to always show up as me and thank you for showing up as you. Welcome to Growth Mode. All right, Aaron. I can tell you that with our company, there's a gap between how we sometimes explain to the marketplace what the value of our groups are and why people should join them okay. and the perceived reason people should join them. So to better give you a better idea, we know that the more people an individual brings to the group, like people they're proud to make introductions to. We do B2B networking groups. Right. Right. We know that the more people that bring the group, that is more people that have the ability to represent their company and open doors for them. And if they bring people that they're proud of, that they'd love to introduce to other people, they create this cool environment of just phenomenal introductions. So yeah. help me out. How do we figure out how to say this messaging better where people can actually wrap their head around it? Because we say it, but I don't think they grasp onto it. It's just not quite the right language or verbiage. All right. So a couple of things here that I kept hearing you say over and over and over again. We, 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 our message, our message, our message. Mm -hmm. Like that, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how much you believe it. What matters is their perception. Mm -hmm. You've got, Good. I Fair. would flip the priority. Okay. I would flip the priority, right? I'm not saying you've got to create a little bit of a situation here. And it's a, it's cliche. And I don't mean it to be manipulative, but it is also true. Sell them what they want and give them what they need. They're, the one thing I learned very early on, and it, it's also, by the way, massively relieves a lot of stress. There is nothing magic that you can say to get people to buy from you. Agreed. Agreed. And so agreed. this is like the best news in the universe because it lets you off the hook of doing kind of where you have yourself stuck. Um, by the way, I didn't give you the disclaimer. I'm real duress. Oh, fuck, dude. You haven't listened to the show. Fucking a lot, right? When I say that you're doing this wrong. No, it's all fucking, yeah, no, 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 yeah, no, look, the, the more real it is, the freaking better everybody else can fucking lean in. So. Right. So when I'm listening to the way you positioned your question, it's all about what can we say? And you got the best intentions. You're not wrong. Right, 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 right. right. What can we say to get you to understand? It's not your job to get them to understand with your message, your top level message. To me, those deeper understandings is once you're in the door. Because there isn't anything magical you can say to get them in right. one understanding, right? You're, you're jumping steps. So, well, so, okay, let me reposition a little bit. So I don't need the, uh, yes, we need a marketing message out front, right? Yeah. But we also need to figure out how we get our clients in the groups that are already members to help themselves. So how, what do you, what do you, okay, fair. What are you currently doing to that? What, what's your current approach? So 
trying to explain the benefit of bringing other people that they would be proud to introduce to right. their groups. Because for, for, for in my head, this is where I keep coming at it, is if I'm going to be in a weekly virtual group, mm -hmm. right, I want to be around people that I really want to be around. Like, I'm excited to see them each week. I want to open doors for them. I want to learn from them environment. That's how I perceive it. But I know that, it's, that their perception is not the same thing. It's not that their perception is not the same thing. Their priority is not the same. It, I agree with that too. So, right, the priority is not the same thing. So, okay, so a couple of things here. Um, number one, their priority is they're there to grow their business. And consciously, consci at the conscious level, do they understand? And the answer is yes, that if you were to ask them, hey, isn't it better to network than prospect? Consciously, they agree with you. Right. Subconsciously, they're going, I got to pay this bill, this bill, yes. this bill. Yes. Right. Like they're, they're subconscious, like we all know which one's actually in control and nobody's going to look you in the eye and say, of course not, you're wrong. I don't want referrals. But they're being driven by a different elephant, right? They're being driven Absolutely. by a different elephant. So how do we get to the elephant? How do we get into that subconscious? We have to show them. You can't tell anybody anything. We're all old. We're too old. We're way past the age of so, just tell me yeah. I'm going to do I would show them by prioritizing the outcome that you want to share with them, right? Um, you already mentioned somebody gave you this great, I absolutely agree with this great idea of um, highlighting the referrals, the introductions that they're getting. It's are you reinforcing constantly? One of the, one of the concepts that we've, rolled out for them to see if they would bite on for lack of a better word to put was what's the number one industry that sends you referrals mm -hmm. and who's the top dog in that industry right what would happen if you got a chance to sit with that person every week over a given amount of time what's the odds that you guys would form a relationship then and they'd likely open up their client base for you and vice versa. The, my gut response is the challenge that you're having is there's too many dots to connect. It's, there's too many dots, right? There's too many steps between them and the outcome that you've put in front of them. Okay. Right? Those are long-term situations. Doesn't make you wrong. Right. It's That's fair. Hard sell. It's a hard sell. Like, one of the things that I'll say all the time is count the dots. Count the dots. How many dots exist between the thing that you want and the place that you are, right? How many dots are there? How many steps have to happen before you get that outcome that you want? Or in this case, you are trying to show people that a 10-dot process is worth it and their mentality is a two-dot situation. So this is going back, people don't buy fitness, they buy freaking weight loss, right? Exactly, exactly. You know, like this is not, like this is a really, you're dead on, you're not wrong. But it's a hard sell because again, they want two dot solutions and you're trying to sell them 10 dot solutions. So we have a philosophical disagreement with networking in the world. Networking in the world says you network for referrals. I completely disagree with that entire concept, okay? A referral is Bob meets Sally. Sally, I've told Bob all about your services. He's looking for me. He's excited, right? There's a sale attached, right? I don't think networking is to get referrals. It's to get introduced to the right people, the right places, and the right opportunities. Because rarely, very rarely am I going to run across, like, your perfect ideal client. I'm just, people well, aren't going to come here's the other thing. It's not even that you're not going to run across them. You have enough. I go back to what I've been yeah. saying. You have other priorities. Absolutely. Absolutely. You have your own problem. <laughs> absolutely. The last thing you want to do is sell for me when you're trying to sell for you. Like, absolutely. Oh, right. So, so we uh, constantly teach that you're not going into these groups to look for referrals. Go treat your, your clients so fucking amazing that they open doors for you. Right. 
if you treat your clients well, it's like finding that new restaurant that's just amazing food. The first thing you do is go tell everybody about it. If you over deliver for your clients, they will do the same for you. Right. Okay. Right. They'll brag about what's it. the point of the group. Tell me the, the point of the group is so you can get introduced. So if like, let's say, you know, the top three industries that send you referrals and let's say maybe it's a bookkeeper, a CPA. Honoring, again, with all the love in the world, to me, you're diametrically opposed to what you're saying. Cause my no, definition no. of show me where I'm missing you, because when you're telling me that I come to the group to meet the people most likely. Let me finish explaining and, and, and it will get there. Right. So a referral is the end user sale. So for instance, Aaron, what industry sends you the most referrals, like gives you the most referrals? Uh, marketing subject matter experts. Perfect. Okay. So marketing subject matter expert, do they typically become a client of yours or do they typically open doors for you? Both. Okay. Let's focus on the, they open doors for you. Okay. Okay. I, my world, my belief, I go to an event, I go to a group, I go to a conference. It's to let people know they need to meet every marketing person they have. Okay. Not to make them an end user client. If that happens, cool. Yeah. But what, ha what would happen if you met a hundred marketing experts before the end of the year? Odds are it would drastically impact the bottom line of your business. So here's a, a real example. A young lady said across me about two weeks ago, and she does the college prep for families to help them save money on getting their kids to college. I asked her a simple question. I said, I know it's really hard because a lot of people don't talk about their kids and how much they're going to pay for college and all that stuff. I said, so what industry sends you the most referrals? And without skipping a beat, she said, bookkeepers. I said, cool. Instead of going to networking and worrying so much of trying to get people to introduce you to families who need help with college prep, what if you said, hey, I do college prep, but I need to meet every bookkeeper you have a relationship with? And her eyes just lit up on me. I'm like, yes, what would happen if you met 100 bookkeepers before the end of the year? And she'd be like, oh my God, it would completely change my business. So for me, it, you're going to get referrals, but you're not going from your first tier people right. and saying, hey, I need I, you to refer me to the end user client. So don't get stuck on semantics. I think what I was listening to before was just more sem a semantic, you know, definition different. But to me, what you're describing is a better approach to networking for exponential results. Correct. Add in there as well that it's not always about just getting introduced to people. Sometimes it's being introduced to the right opportunities. Like you hear there's this right. private event going on that you need to be a part of. And, right. That different approach. Yep. So where is it not working? Because to me, that makes sense. It makes sense, but we're battling 30 years of bad programming. Correct. Right. So, so okay, one of the things I teach people, perfect. One of the things that I'm a, that I teach people is like, you're swimming upstream, guy. Yes. It's like, yeah. you're swimming upstream. like m when you're in a business and a business exists to make money and you make money by solving people's problems, I tell people preach to the choir, right? We all know the whole thing about don't preach to the choir, the saying don't preach to the choir. In business, you want to preach to the choir. You want to sell to people who already agree or believe in your concept and just the only decision they have to make is that you're the one to, that they should choose from. Make sense? So for example, yeah, it does. it's just, wait, it's, wait, it's frustrating at the same time. It's yes. really frustrating. Well, you've chosen to swim upstream. So here we are. Right. So, okay, so for example, just to dumb it down, a really obvious example, if you're a ghostwriter who writes blogs, go out into the universe to find people who know they need blogs and they can pick you to help them as opposed to trying to convince people that they need blogs and oh by the way i can help you right one level not two and what you're talking about is i think there's a little bit of getting stuck in semantics because don't you don't want to make the traditional networking the bad guy because you're up against 30 years of i don't right i get it but if you make it the bad guy, I think you just confuse people. I think a easier sale for you would is almost counterintuitive for your personality yep. and mine. Yep. You, you need a gentler approach. 
because the banging, because you're trying, uh, I'm a woman, right? I know I need to lose weight. The approach that you're talking would be as if my significant other chased me around going, you're doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong. You need to lose weight. You need to lose weight. What is my reaction going to be to him? Fuck off at some point. Fuck off. (laughs) Right. Exactly. And, And you're, you're, this is where our own, like you're so direct and I am so direct that if somebody comes up to me and goes, dude, you are doing this wrong. You are thinking about it wrong. Here, look over here with me for a minute, and I'm going to show you a different Which, way of thinking. I'd be all over it, but we're also very weird. Yeah, but but I, I have never had a person sit across me one-on-one, and I've explained this to them that they didn't go, oh, my God, where the hell has this been my entire life? Right. Right? Because we, a gentleman I sat across from yesterday runs an IT company. And, you know, he's sitting in the chambers and the BNIs and he's like, nobody's doing business with me. Right. <laughs> and I'm right. like, that's Here's how we're why. here for. Right. right. You know, and once they wrap their head around it, you see the light bulbs go off. Why I mean, can't I do that on scale? I mean, I understand I, I'm picking the fight, right? Because a person is great. People are idiots. That's what. <laughs> that's right. right. That person is fantastic. People are dumb. Like, we know this. I do all sorts of stupid shit. Right? A person is great. So do I go and now start changing the marketing message? I would uh, change the messaging more around a, a a powerful approach for exponential results. Right. And it, I like the idea of exponential results, the powerful approach we can play with. I love the idea of the concept of exponential results because that really is what you're offering. And that is something people want. People are willing to, you know, you're not, I don't know, we can't remember how many years I have on you, but you remember the marshmallow experiment when we yep. were kids, yep. right? People aren't good at weeding for delayed, where humans are not good at delayed um, gratification. I know it's, I, I heard your dots, right, on that. And the, the thing is, is that they would follow that process. It would actually. They would get referrals stupid fast so show them less dots show them less dots show them why what sounds like a long i have the same thing by the way i run into the same problem what show them why in messaging and marketing in a quick hit with visuals a you know a powerful approach for exponential results yeah because if if to that like like in your case if you met a marketing influencer that had tens of thousands of these marketing experts following them and like you got in there and built a relationship, there's a good chance that y'all two could become friends and her 10,000 come looking in your direction. Well, and I also think, and here's a question for you. I also think that there might be a little bit of a business maturity that has to happen. Before you can do this. Enough market share? Is that what you're saying? Not necessarily mar- business acumen, relationships, brand awareness. Mm. Like you can't do this if you don't have your shit together. Because you can't be a reciprocal piece of this relationship. Again, if, you're, um, if your own ship is sinking, right? Yes, the, yes, say, yes, like, yes. What are the two things, in my opinion, the two things that mess us up every single time? Insecurity and desperation. Insecurity and desperation. If you've got empower syndrome, imposter syndrome, if you think you don't, if you think walking into this room, they don't want to talk to me, they're up here and I'm down here. This won't work for you. And desperation. If you're so worried about your next sale that you can't take you can't get out of your own way to understand a different approach. This approach won't work for you. Right. So you might have a little bit of who is your target market problem. I don't, um, or the I, don't think it, I, I think it's awareness problem, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so we're not looking for the rookie networker, right? B and I is out there. B and I can have them. They're beautiful at doing that. We're not looking for the B2C folks either, right? I don't, I mean, I love the realtors and stuff. They're fine. But, but, you know, realtors don't talk to decision makers. 
So I need the B2B service-based business owners and salespeople that are selling a service going after bigger deals. I would almost stop call. Do you call it networking? Um, we tried to take the name networking off of it. I, um, would, we did. I 100% agree with that. I but It didn't work. It actually hurt the business hard. What do you mean by hurt the business? We Is lost it... a lot of people in because they signed up for networking. You lost a lot of it. Well, did you take a step back in order to take a leap forward, though? We tried for six months to try and really turn the corner, just calling it success champions. And yeah, because success champions doesn't mean anything. Well, what's, there still you know, has to be a... What's, the right. what's your tagline? Uh, success champion. Be, this, be the champion of your success is the overall message. Um, you know, so ch success champions and talking about creating powerful partnerships for exponential results. I think it's too many words. I don't know if that's, it's too many big words, but, but I, I like the direction of it. Right? Like, I still stand by not using networking if your line in the sand is, because here's the thing, there's 85,000 people out there telling me that they're not like my mother's networking group. Like, and yes, they're all all yes. of it. So right, we, we all are. So we, you need a different approach, right? Like, I'll give you an example. Do you know who Josh Tapp is? Did we talk about this? I, I know the name. So I think I would, probably because I was yelling at him about you. Uh, you think about him to you the other day. Um, he is, he talks about connections. He doesn't talk about networking. He talks about creating powerful partnerships by putting the right people in the room. He doesn't talk about networking. He is out there doing exactly what you're describing. And he never calls it networking. I hear you. And, and, and that was the reason I pulled networking off it uh, at one point. The problem we ran into was people then didn't know what it was. So it could have been a messaging. Powerful connections is, or, or success champion doesn't mean anything. So you need a, a tagline that says what it is. And I absolutely agree with that because when I, when I met you and I looked at your website, I didn't understand what you did. Like when you, when I met you and looked at your website and then you told Which website? Me, I don't know. If it's my main website, Donnie Bovine, yeah, that thing's got to be completely rebranded and built. Okay, that if was six, yeah. Right. If, it's, if it's success champions and you right. can't tell what to do, we're probably, in trouble. Right. Like, yeah, I was like, wait, this is what he does. So, okay, I would back it all the way up to square one. What's the what's the problem that you solve? We help grow sales. That's not a problem. That's an outcome. What's the problem that you solve? People can't fucking sell, so they network. Okay. So the the problem that you said, people can't sell, so they network so that to alleviate the need to sell. What's the problem? I'll give that, you an example. That, that, that they believe it alleviates the need to sell. Okay. So they believe, like, in not having this magically dialed in is one of the reasons you're getting stuck. Okay. Right? So they believe that networking. So let's, let's, I'll bring you full circle with it. Nobody gets into networking because they're crushing it. Almost everybody finds some form of networking because their sales suck. They don't know how to find prospects. So they hit the Google and go, how else can I sell? And lo and behold, networking pops up or somebody tells them about a group or something. They then think networking is the holy grail. Like all they're going to have to do is go show up in a room and the work clients are going to magically appear. Right. Well, one, they're networking wrong. And two, yes. I absolutely agree with you that for your ideal client avatar, networking is how you get a ball rolling. It's not how you grow your business. Correct. Correct. So, yes. 100%. So what we, the, the people that I want are not the rookies. Okay. I want the people that are seasoned along the way and they're like, there's got to be a better way of fucking okay. doing Okay, so their problem isn't that they're avoiding sales conversations by networking. Their problem uh, then is they don't know what comes next. I think that's close. I, I think it's, mm, it's not that they don't know what's next. They don't know a better way to do it. Better. Better is a good word. They, 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 right. They don't know. There, there's got to be a better room, a better way, a better place. Yeah. Well, the, then that problem becomes 
the problem that you solve, and this is language is iterative, so it gets better. Hang on. Is taking, you know, the problem that you solve is businesses that have plateaued because they've outgrown networking, but they don't know what to do next. They know they're outgrowing their. Outgrowing is true. Outgrowing is true. So I, I think I go back to my days when I sold commercial printing, mm -hmm. right? My average deal was 25 to like $200,000, right? Um, and I was doing big business. I tried to do BNI. I'm not bashing on BNI. It's an amazing organization. But networking in a BNI, there was nobody in that room that could get me introduced to people who needed to do that size business, right? So I tried the chambers. The chambers couldn't get me to that level. So I had to create my own groups to bring other people together that were going after the same size of business I was going after. What people don't know is if they were to get into a room full of people that are selling to the same level of, you know, clientele that they're going after, they'll all collaborate and grow together and do a shit ton of business. So what about this problem? Because it always starts with the problem that you solve. I'll give you an example um, to show you where I'm trying to go with this. The problem that I solve. I eliminate the anxiety of scrambling to find your next client, which keeps you stuck in reaction mode and unable to skip. That's a problem. That's the problem that I solve. I eliminate the anxiety of people having to feel like they're scrambling for their next client as opposed to systematically having a pipeline, which keeps them stuck in reaction mode and unable to scale. I build client acquisition systems. So when I'm listening, I like the idea of build client acquisition systems. That's all I needed here, but that's my personality. All right. the other is fluff. It is fluff. That's not what's out in the world. It's what I need to know in order to build fair. my marketing. Fair, fair, fair. It's not. It's not what I say. It's what I know and what I keep as my litmus test for all of my content. So I have to understand the problem. So when I'm listening to you talk about the problem that they have. The problem is your ideal client has outgrown traditional networking, but doesn't know what to replace it with. Correct. I would, yeah, I'll, I'll 100% agree with that. They, they, they've they, they been in the chambers, they've been in the B&Is, and they're right. like, why the fuck is none of this working? So go ask them that. Like, that. that's what goes in your marketing. So I sat across from that IT guy, and I was able to very quickly explain that he could go right back to the chamber and say, you know, I need to meet every payroll company, HR company that you need to know because every financial advisor that's dealing with these companies, they're going to end up talking about intimate IT problems, right? I'm like, you could go back to B&I even and stop telling people you need people right. looking for IT. You need to be connected with these people who already have your ideal client. Right, the power partner. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. and, and so... It's a philosophical change that has to happen to sell them weight loss and trying to get back to there, right? I hate asking this particular question because it sounds like I don't know what I'm doing, but do we go back to just fucking selling them networking? No. Okay, good. I, thank God. I think I'll stick. No, I, yeah. this is why I say I think you, I totally understand. No, a couple of things. You took networking out of the, Name of the business. When did that happen? Uh, this year. Okay. This and then year. We put it back in. So, this, like, this is not a fair. I think you gave up three feet from goal. I would tell you, revenue wise, I would 100% disagree. Well, you said it went, that it's where do you want to play? Like, do you want to, right? What is the, you're, you're creating these groups. You're creating these power partners. You're talking about people who have outgrown traditional networking but don't know what's to, what to do next. Um, I like the idea, the concept of you powerful partnerships, for, you know, creating powerful partnerships for exponential results. It is not, you know, you can say networking, networking done differently, but um, I hate yeah, that. And so do I. So do I because that's just um, a marketing spin, right? Exactly. Everybody exactly. sells it. Um, you know, and I hate this, I, that, I, that this, this next statement, we're something that has to be fucking experienced. Right. Right. And, and the problem is, 
unless you get your people inviting people in, you're not grabbing enough people to experience. Then how do you get your, okay, that's fair. Then how do you get your people to? That goes back to the messaging problem we have. The messaging problem. If you were attracting the right people originally, you wouldn't have the problem. That I 100% agree with. I, you know, when we first started out, um, we were probably closer to a B and I in nature because that's what we knew, right? What? So, but as we evolved and grew, we realized that there was a lot of things we could just do better. Sure. And as we continued to improve and grow, the people that are with us now, 99% of them get it, right? And are kind of people. But I can't say that we picked up all the right people throughout well, the years. That's normal. Right, right, right. It's, it's growth. I think. What actual problem? I mean, if, if you have the right people, most of the right people. What I, I, the, I how do we freaking grave so much market? So I have a theory. Actually, not really a theory. I know this to be true. That Go look at a BNI group. In BNI, let's say there's 30 people in this group. There's two absolute rock stars in that group that sell mm -hmm. B2B. Right. I don't need all the BNI chapters. I need those two fucking rock stars. Right. Right. So if we could figure out how to speak to those two people, we would instantly grab so much market share because they are at that point of life of fuck. Why am I sitting with all these people that I can help, but can't help me back? Well, that goes back to the powerful partnerships for exponential results. Right. Um, I don't know why that sounds so fluffy to me. Because it's a tagline. It's always fluffy. <laughs> Fair. It's a tagline. But, it's always fluffy. Right. Well, um, the newer chapters and groups, and they get it. They're growing like weeds, right? So, so part of my my mental game is I know I'm on a patience play. Yeah, like, I don't understand the. Pro I mean, here here's what you've done in the last time we, you know, that we've been talking together. Here, you've told me this is the problem, then you've told me 85 reasons why it's not a problem and it's working. It, the group, the groups are working. The right people are coming. I don't know. So let me. What the clarity around the problem that you yep. are trying to solve for your business? Newer groups that we are launching, we have a newer training program and the likes, and we are getting them, and they're building out the right way. Our Great. older groups that have not grown or stagnant on members can't wrap their head around this problem. Then let them go. Why are you, why are you banging your head against the wall? Go make more new groups. Okay, so that leads to my next problem. So the one thing we can do is word of mouth, like we can build out a chapter like here in Fort Worth and it's amazing. We <laughs> we keep continuing to launch new groups and everything here because we're here. Yep, cool. How do I go into Kansas City where nobody knows about us, nobody's heard of us, uh, our brand's not in that marketplace yet. And you, get, you do exactly what your business model is for. You talk to enough people until you find a powerhouse through your powerful partnerships in Kansas City. You've already got the like-minded person. Do what you're teaching. We That's, all do Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I 100% have not gone to we my marketplace. Need to learn. Yeah. Yeah, we I, I have... what we need to learn. Go do your process. Well, yeah, I, I, I literally, I have not at all gone to my network and say, hey, guys, I want to do a chapter in freaking Kansas City. want a powerhouse in Kansas City who understands this model. In law of sacrifice, those, those old chapters are lovely people and we wish them well, but they, it, it, it's you either evolve or you die. And, right. and here's one thing that I get, that I do when I'm in these growth modes. I'll, full transparency, I burned, them out. I burned down my company this year. I closed every offer we had. I changed everything about the way we did business. Because to your point, I couldn't get what I had and turn it into what I wanted. I needed to stop it and create it. It's, it was not a bridge. It was, it was a brush fire and we knew growth, right? 
So letting go of something that's no longer serving you in order to create, so you don't, right? So the problem that you started out by talking about, how do we get them to get to understand? You don't. Yeah. Because if you've truly put in the effort to try, then they're just not your people. Right. And Donnie, in a million years, I never would have thought I'd have to say to you. Well, so. Save money. <laughs> like, you're, right? They're, they can be wonderful humans. And if they, they're going to either grow with you or they're going to do their own thing. And that's fine. You know, I hear you. Right. And, and I, and I do see every, the, all the words coming out of it. And, and the, do I, can I honestly see 100% where this whole business is going? Yeah. I've got, I see the roadmap. I see how everything's going to build out. Right. It's the gap between where we are and that moment. Okay. So this is me just thinking out loud. I need to quit freaking working backwards and just start working fucking forward. So you are um, obsessing over the wrong thing. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. So, and that's, and that comes from that damn save the world complex that we all have. Yeah. A little um, bit of a rescuer. Yeah, hundred percent a rescuer. Because oh, nobody, I, I got this mental thing. Nobody fucking rescued me, so I'll go fucking snatch them all up. Yeah. Um, when I should be continuing Fine. to Redef no, redefine it. Here, and I'll give you how I got over that. In my business, if I'm going to charge less than $1,000 for something, I give it away for free. Because there's amazing, amazing humans out there who have hobby. I'm not the low-cost leader of coaching and consulting. But I do so much free content. And the right pe I do it because the right people will step up and pay me to get more help. And the really, really nice people who will never get an ROI that would measure up to their investment can get help for free and go do great things and be happier for it. For sure. For I have sure. no problems with that. I have zero problems with that. And I say, it's your business, not your mother. You don't need closure. You just need it to work. So if that means building in a crutch that prevents you from getting in your own way, perfectly reasonably fine. Go make an amazing amazing outcome base this is i like the problem that you solve the problem that you solve is that there's companies that got their ball rolling with networking and they know that they've grown out of traditional networking but they're not sure what to do next yes perfect go find all of them charge a little more right you don't even have to call it networking you can t creating the partnerships for i like you can work on the front end, but what you're talking about is exponential results. That's what people want at that stage, right? At that stage, like, so, for, I mean, you're serving the same people I am. I literally titled my program Leveraged because I teach people how to move into leveraged marketing instead of one-to-one. -one. And that's exactly yeah. what you're talking about. 100%. Right? Exponential results. Yeah. It, it goes back to if you can create an environment where people come in and they now have 20 people who have their name top of mind as they're out growing their business, good yeah. shit happens, right? Right. Um, and, that's, and that's the whole environment. Yeah. And then go put it, pick your cities and go put it in a play. So the way that I do this, you're in Texas, things are a little bit further apart. I'm in Chicago. Mm -hmm. I got all sorts of cities within four or five hours of me driving distance. Pick the next closest city. Ask the people who believe what you believe, who do I need to know to there? Who do I need to know there? Go to, you know, schlep over there, go to a bunch of networking events, look for your rock stars and have a conversation with them. Yeah, I was talking to Jerry Mack and uh, Mack Navarra about this. And, you know, Dallas is 45 minutes away from me in traffic can be upwards of two hours. Okay, just depending on where I'm trying to get to. There is an event in Dallas that happens once a month, seven o'clock in the morning, right? So it would be, and I'm up, you know, early anyways, but you know, that I, if I got in that room, 80% of that room is, is our people. I go to, I drive to Milwaukee. I drive to Indianapolis. So, 
I'm just being a bitch. I don't fucking hate car drives. We thought we were going to have a conversation about messaging. And we right. instead we're having a oh. conversation about how Donnie's got to put his big boy panties on. Yeah, hundred percent. I just don't. I I I hate commute. I hate car rides. Right. So this is just me pulling my own bitch. Frame it. Yeah. I don't give a shit about reframing. It's about sucking it the fuck up, Buttercup, and let's go. Yeah. Right. But uh, I'm I'm kind of like you. I don't always need to reframe, and I just need to freaking do it. Yeah. You know. Um. And what's funny is the guy that runs that group is not my biggest fan, and I could give a shit. I don't need him. I need his people. No. So, um. But I I like that. So we're we're gonna start playing with that because, um, if tired. you I understand why you went back to including networking in your title and all the things. But to me, the mistake that is is you're selling to the lowest common denominator by doing that. You don't design your business around what you think you can pull off. Go create your dream. Well. For, uh, I'm confident enough that we've redefined networking enough that it, it's not going to hurt us. And it goes back to when somebody gets into our world, they're going to wrap their head around it. They're going to get it. So I'm, I'm not worried about on the front end. I'm, I'm, I'm learning to not diminish who the fuck I am, but soften the edges some, you know, uh, to bring more people into the world. Uh, and, and I would put all the whole, you've got to experience it to believe it all over the place. That's true. We have not done that. Right. Like you're telling me once they're in the room, they get it. Well then scream from the rooftops. You've got to experience this to believe it. Cause you know, it, it's, we have, we have a couple of newer chapters that we send all the people who are trying to see our world. And almost every time they go, holy shit, where the hell has this right. been? You know, I don't experience uh, it to believe it. Good shit. You know, I didn't think you actually knew anything. No, I'm totally kidding. <laughs> I didn't think I knew anything either. I get, no. I, I, even a blind squirrel finds a nut. For sure. For sure. Ow. Well, this was a lot of fun. Thank you for this. I, I like the, the uh, I love reframing things, but most times I can just, you know, for this one, I like it. this whole episode has been very, very enlightening. So thank you for that. Good. Awesome. I have yeah. found that it's always about asking more questions. For sure. For sure. And we always know the fucking answer. Sometimes we just need to sit across from somebody else that can beat it out of us. <laughs> I was happy to beat it out of you. It's for sure. For sure. Aaron, how do people find you? How do they get in touch with you? If you want to experience. <laughs> Great. No, seriously. Make it really. And this easy. wasn't even a beat up job, right? So, no, so th this, th is, this, this, this was just fun. Me, for you, this is, should be the most relieving thing you've heard all day. It actually does feel a lot that way. Right? Like, let it go. L right? Like, this is permit, not that you needed permission, but like the aha moment to let go. Right? And a little bit of some language around what to say and a little bit of go do what you're saying. <laughs> what the hell? 100%. So, all right. How do we find It is all at conqueryourbusiness.com. You can get a hold of me. You can see our podcast. You can do all the cool things. It is all at conqueryourbusiness.com. Awesome. So guys, if you made it this far with us, you got any tips or tricks out of this, do me a favor and take a screenshot of wherever you're listening to or watching this. Go to social media, tag me and Aaron in it. And if we both see it, we will bump, jump oh, yeah. in and say howdy and hello. But when that screenshot lets us know that this is the kind of content you're going to continue for us to put out. Thank you for continuing to send all the DMs and messages. I freaking love it. So, Aaron, thanks for hanging out with us, babe. This was a lot of damn fun. I knew we'd have a great conversation. So, guys, as always, love you, mean it. See you, bye.